So moving on from that, speaking of, of new things that WWE is doing, WWE uh, has announced the launch of NXT Europe along with the promotion of uh, Shawn Michaels, which we'll get into later into the show. But essentially, WWE announced that they will be uh, putting NXT UK on a hiatus and that they will be launching NXT Europe to further, uh, you know, further drive their global expansion. And the last show uh, of the NXT UK brand will be September 4th, uh, Worlds Collide, where NXT will go head to head with NXT UK. We were able to find out um, a little bit on NXT last night what their what their aspirations are. Uh, we see that Tyler Bate and Braun Breaker will be going head to head, and it will be a title unification match with the NXT Championship and the NXT UK Championship, um, and that there will be a triple threat match, which I'm really excited about, with with Mandy Rose, Blair Davenport, and Mako Satamara. And it will be merging the NXT Women's and NXT UK Women's Championships. Now, before we get into the discussion about those belts, I wanted to know, in your opinion, uh, was NXT UK a success or was it a failure? I don't want to call it a failure because mm. the talents were very good. It's just that it's a lot of wrestling for one to consume in one week. And I don't mm. think they understand that. Yeah, You know, if you're a true wrestling fan, you're not just watching WWE. Um, and if you're the type of person to watch NXT, you're probably watching AEW. And mm. if you're really that much into AEW, you might be even watching Impact or watching New Japan. So I just feel like it wasn't because they didn't execute it correctly or, or matter what day of the week that they would have had it on. It's just a matter of it's a lot of wrestling for one person to consume. And mm. out of and the way that um, WWE kind of lowly promoted it i feel mm. like it hindered us uh or hindered us or the product i should say because there was no sense of urgency for us to go over there and watch it especially right. if you're not reminding us and you're not putting any importance of like the belt or the talents that are over there you know what i mean the only time right. they felt important was if they occasionally in the beginning stages they would advertise the pay-per-views right but they stopped with that too and got a little bit lazy so yeah. I think us as fans got lazy, and then again, AEW and other companies, um, you know, came into fruition, right. and we got distracted with that. And again, I forget about it. Mm. You know, I, I if you wouldn't have brought up in this conversation, I I I wouldn't even have had a thought about it because <laughs> that's how little effort they put in on their end. If they had put more right. effort in just making it, um, just feel like it not was just only important, but it was just as prestigious as. Um, the original NXT, because they almost made it seem as if, like, yeah, this is developmental. This is, like, pre-developmental, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, cause everyone always came over here anyways. Right. So it's just like, oh, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to see those same faces anyways. Just they're, they're going to they're gonna be new characters later on, you know? Right. So that's just me personally. The only few people I felt like that were very – that were relevant out of UK was um, Walter, people like Walter mm. or Tony or Ray Ripley. And even yeah. so, they hardly reference them being in UK, even though, like, one of their, like, greatest accomplishments came from that brand, but right. they hardly reference it. Right. So Absolutely. how am I supposed to feel as a fan about this if you guys don't even make it feel like it's important to go back and watch that and, and see why is that so important that they held those world titles over in the UK? So I yeah. don't want to call it a failure because they didn't try. It is a failure because you guys didn't promote it. Yeah, I feel that. Definitely understand and, and 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 feel that for sure. I I think in my opinion, was it a success or a failure? I say that it was neutral. Reason being is yes, as you were saying, there was wasn't a lot of effort as far as the promotion of the product. Um, but I think I I don't even think it was a matter of effort. I think it was a matter of just desire. Obviously, we know that when NXT was kind of in its heyday, Vince was in charge, and so you know hunter can only do but so much and hunter was doing some incredible things over there once you set like you said they had you know walter over there who had one of the longest uk championship reigns in the brand's history um you had Rhea ripley kind of come up through that avenue you had tony storm kind of come up through that avenue uh as well as mustache mountain pete dunn like came up through that avenue as well um so they were able to produce some incredibly incredibly gifted and talented 
you know, characters and athletes. Um, I think that had Hunter been in charge a little bit sooner, we would have seen a little bit more of an investment made into the the UK uh, as far as being it, it being promoted on, you know, Raw or SmackDown or just being more f- heavily featured. Um, I think that um, with the NXT UK division, I think that the only time they were really made important was when the WWE would go over <laughs> to the UK because there were there was a show where they went over to the UK and like Seth Rollins issued an open challenge and Walter came out and then um so like they did little stuff like that but it was nothing on like a grand scale that really elevated the brand um so I I don't think that NXT UK was a success or a failure it was neutral because it produced talents but it wasn't able to sustain longevity but I think that a step towards you know, making it NXT Europe is a step in the right direction. Obviously, you're casting a much, a much wider net, much greater possibilities, and that kind of encompasses the UK as well. Um, so that's how I feel about NXT UK, if it's a success or a failure. Now, the, the second thing that I was going to ask, how do you feel about the, the, the title unification? And because the NXT uh, and NXT UK titles are merging both the, the men's title as well as the women's title, we can only assume that the tag titles are next and the, you know, whatever mid-card titles are next. Do these title unifications qualify the NXT championships to be world championships? Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like that's the direction they wanted 2.0 to, to um, go in. I don't think they mm-hmm. want to treat 2.0 necessarily like it was a um, developmental. I do think they still want to treat it like a third brand. Yeah. Um. And I do think that it does give it more credibility. Um, and it's a lot of belts. I feel like they have far too many belts on WWE yeah. in, in, in general, to a point where a lot of people will forget who's champion. So right. I just feel like it's maybe some people may disagree with it, but I feel like when there were less belts, yes, people would have to, more people were fighting over a belt, yes, but it almost bought um, more relevance to the belt. You know what I mean? I feel yeah. like back then, like 10, 15 years ago, when we had just one belt to represent, um, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, this is a SmackDown belt, this is the Raw belt, this is this belt, this is this belt, this is this tag team belt for this brand, this is the tag team belt for this brand. I felt as though um, back then there was more of a sense of urgency for these people mm. to bust their asses to get the belt. Whereas yeah. now it's just like you have about 20 belts to choose from. So it's like, all right, right I don't got that one. I could go chase down this one. But there's so many, like I said, like that you start to pick and choose are right. These are the relevant ones. These ones are just afterthoughts. You yeah. know, it almost Agreed. becomes like these are your role title belts and the rest are basically the equivalent of the 24-7 belt. Right. You just I have agree. something in your hand, just have something in your hand. So Literally. I think if you Literally. merge it now, especially with the way they presented it, um, like I, I never cared for a Mandy Rose match, but just that whole like presentation, the whole visual of just seeing her come out with Mako and, and Blair you know, just that that visual of just these uh, this one prestigious um champion, and Mako's been around for a long time, y'all. A She's been long around since time. like the WCW days, all right? Yes. I don't think they stressed that, and they should have stressed that. <laughs> like, right, I agree. She she is low key like a legend in her yeah, own right. Absolutely. To see her holding that belt and then staring the new in the eye, which is Mandy, I was like, wow, what a fucking visual, you know? Right. Right. Like now, I'm interested. I didn't care for that woman's belt before, but now I care. Right. Absolutely. I, I, agree. I, I No, no, no. You are absolutely spot on. And I agree with you there. First off, I do believe that there, there, there are too many, too many belts in WWE. I think it's too many when you look at WWE overall as a product. But if you look at the brands individually, I don't, maybe there's too many, too many belts. But I do believe that these title unifications are obviously going to enhance each championship and they're going to make by default, they're going to be world tag team champions, world women's champion, world, you know, NXT champion. And and to be honest, I think it should have been done sooner. Like, even when NXT was just NXT black and gold, like, a, a definition of a world championship is a, is a championship that's defended globally. Like, the NXT title was de- defended in Japan. It was defended in London. It was defended in Australia before there was an NXT UK. So I feel like this is a long overdue move. Uh, as it pertains to the matches that are going to be happening over this, I think this is going to be, these are going to be great matches that are going to enhance the legacy of each belt. I do also believe that this is a great opportunity to elevate Blair Davenport 
because that triple threat that Miko, uh, Mandy, Blair, I think is a great way to have Blair get both belts without making Miko look weak by having her pinned. Because Miko, from the time she joined NXT UK, has always been elevated. She never lost a match, ever, I don't think. So this keeps her protected, and I think that if you want to pivot her into NXT Europe or bring her over into the main NXT roster, which is what's happening, all the NXT UK talents, because they released about 9 or 12 NXT UK talents, I think that the remaining talents from NXT UK are going to be brought over to the main NXT roster. Um, So I think that this is a great way to elevate each championship. And I also think this is a great way um, to add prestige to these titles. So did you, I was going to say, did you have anything else to add that you wanted to add on top of that? Mm, The only thing I wanted to add is that I feel like Blair is getting like a a lot of unnecessary hate right off the gate. Um, Mm -hmm. Cause like, I feel like we need someone like her in the division. I understand, yes, that whole thing with her and Osprey happened, and yeah. she was a bully. She took her accountability for it. Okay, it happened, and it's in the past. We need someone like her, and like I always like I loved her since even before she was on um, AEW, and I saw mm-hmm. her, saw her in Stardom. Like she just has this this look and this grittiness to her. But I I also love the way she carries herself as a heel. I mean, it's it's very natural. You can see right. in her matches. Like, she's a whole bully about it right. when she's a heel. Um, I feel like she is someone that could bring more validity to the, to the division. She is someone that is seasoned. She's experienced, um, mm-hmm. which is why I'm happy she's definitely on 2.0 because we have too many green people. I understand that's yeah. the whole point of 2.0, but yeah. like they're trying to bring in new faces and they're trying to, you know, get them into shape. But we could use a veteran like her. Um, and, uh, again, she knows how to carry herself. Um, her promos are excellent. They are. Um, it, got it. it makes me mad that Tony Storm isn't here because the two of them together <laughs> as a pair was lovely. And it almost pisses me off that she's gone now. But um, I just I just been seeing the unnecessary hate that she's been getting. And I'm just like, can you guys just give this girl a break? I understood that I happened. That it's not something that we were happy to see. But it's just like... She's doing something that's really good for the division, and I feel like she's going to be a game changer. Like, not even if she loses this match and she stays in, in 2.0, I feel like she's going to help raise that division up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, she's going to give a lot of girls their better matches, and I feel like she's definitely going to be um, a driving force when it's yeah. time for her to go into the main roster. Like, I can already see her having some some matches that are going to tear down the show. Absolutely. Um, you know, yeah, with the four horse woman, but I mean, I can even see her having a good match with Liv, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, or what a Shayna Baszler, that, that, that already was like what the first match that came to my mind when I saw her. I'm like, her versus Shayna would just give me everything. But yeah, that that's the only thing I just wanted to add just because um, I just think people, people need to kind of lay off on her. And also Blair, and Blair, if they, if Blair ever wanted to that, I never even thought about the hate but yeah they do need to lay off for her but as a tag team no, it's all you see on twitter as, as a tag team blair and Rhea ripley i would like that Ooh. that interests me that, that would be me. nasty considering Rhea and tony storm were like their first each, they yeah. were each other's first feud on uk i would say yeah like the that. story tells <laughs> <laughs> the story tells itself but i i 100 agree with that